Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'd like to share with you a few fun alternate project ideas that I came up with using the contents of the April 2018 paper pumpkin kit from Stampin' Up! titled You Are My Anchor. I'm making this video a little shorter this month, not sharing as many ideas as I normally do because my 12 year old took a hard fall in the garage on April 22nd and he broke his kneecap. So even though I have a ton of ideas in my head with this kit, I have had very little time to make them. But I did want to share with you the adorable few that I did make. I'll be using a few extra supplies as I share my unique projects. You can find these items listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting a subscription, the 50% off promotion for new subscribers, joining my paper pumpkin fan club on Facebook, and seeing peaks of some exclusives that I send my personal subscribers. If you're watching my video on YouTube, you can also click below for the link that will lead you to my website where I've shared close-up photos of what I'm going to be sharing today. The kit's intended project is to make four of these boxes that hold little cards inside. And they have little matching envelopes as well. And you get to make five different designs. So again, four boxes with five designs. That's 20 of these stinking cute little cards. <laughs> so my thought was, when I got the kit, was wouldn't it be great if we had even more boxes? Because then you could put, instead of cards inside, you could include, say, a card and then a treat. In, you know, and then you'd have all these extra cards, so then what, what do we do? So I went to the online store and I said, let's grab those fun little mini pizza boxes. So the first project is going to be showing you how to put together those mini pizza boxes. And um, I have an alternate way to show you how to put those together as well. What you can put inside them and how you can decorate them. To assemble one of these boxes, you'll want to remove these little extra pieces here and then fold on all the score lines inward so that the shiny side of the box is on the inside. The shiny side is food safe um, or it gives it a little protective layer so that you can put food in there like a cookie or chocolates or whatever. So now that you have all of these little creases folded then you go ahead and you, you start with this base here where the circle is and you bring the two tabs in then you take this front area, this is the front of the box, and you fold it over and tuck those two tabs into the slots. And then you just need to put the cover on by bringing those in, sticking the tabs inside, and you just kind of go like that, just like a pizza box, which is why they're called mini pizza boxes, right? So you can see that it's the same size. It's a little bit taller, but it's the same size on the sides. And let's say that you had those five different cards. I would take the anchor card and I'd match it up with the one that comes in the kit so that you've got coordinating cards with each box, because that's how my mind works. So you've got these four cards with the four boxes that come in the kit. Then, if you have a container of eight pizza boxes, you can put together those eight boxes and match them up with the four other coordinating cards, right? So this one would go with that box, this card would go with this box, and of course the other two designs. There we go. So, can't see them all. There we go. And, and because you can cut your card base in half, so here's the card base that I used, and you just cut it in half like that, you can take and decorate two boxes with one set, uh, set of card supplies. You actually get a ton of extra little pieces like this and you would have enough to decorate two different boxes with what you get to make that one card. So if you have four of each of these cards remaining, you would have one full card, another full card between two boxes, and another full card. So that comes out to be eight boxes added to the kit. You have then 12 different boxes for all those cards. You would then have a few extra cards left over, so you could certainly go and buy more mini pizza boxes if you wanted to. Again, eight come to a pack, but if you bought more, um, you could use a couple more with the remaining cards. As I'm decorating this box to match this card, I want to show you a couple twine t uh, tricks. The um, direction, the video for that paper pumpkin released, 
showed putting the, the twine through and then tying a knot, but I think that that would create too much bulk when you're, you know, I don't know, I just, I thought it was too bulky. So instead what I did is I took and put my twine together, um, just folded it in half and stuck the end through that has the loop. I pushed it through from the front to the back. So the loop is going into the back. And then I took these two ends and I stuck them through the loop and just carefully and slowly cinched it. And that gave it a flatter uh, feel for the envelope when it's inside the envelope. And I think it actually lays nicer. It has that little curl, and that's how I got that look on that card, okay? Um, another twine trick, that's hard to say 10 times fast. <laughs> another trick is that if you want to have a little frayed end, um, so for example, on, on this box here, I have the, the ends, they're a little frayed. So you can take and just twist. All you have to do is just twist in the opposite direction. So let me do that over the white box here so you can see. So I've got the twine here and I'm just going to twist the ends of it in the opposite direction and they loosen up automatically and they fray. I didn't have to do any pulling on it or anything. You just twist it the opposite direction and they automatically will spray out and separate from each other. Okay, so let's decorate this up to match our card. The first thing you want to do is stamp. Now I'm using the ergonomic clear blocks that you can get in the online store. You do get a free block with your first kit. I'm also using our larger stamp pads, um, but you do get an ink spot. It looks like this. With every kit you get your ink. So everything's included except a scissors. You just need a scissors sometimes um, to make the intended product. So I'm inking up the stamp and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it in the lower corner here by pressing down. And I think what would be great in this box would be like a chocolate chip cookie because of that Ahoy. Kind of a play on uh, the brand Chips Ahoy, right? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> now before you remove the hearts from this sheet of little punch outs that you get in the kit, I found that it was a lot easier if you have snail adhesive like this to just run your adhesive along the back side and then you can pop out the heart and it's already sticky. Much, much easier than how I was doing when I first started putting the cards together. So now we have that stuck on there. And this I thought was fun to put dimensionals on. So I was taking and cutting the edges and just trim a couple pieces like this. And then I thought it'd be fun to put the whole thing up on dimensionals because it's white on white, white on a white box. Did you know that you can actually color these boxes? This You can put ink on them. So if you wanted to use a spritzer with re-inkers in it and, and color them to make them different shades, um, different hues or whatever, you could totally do that. I'm leaving them white for simplicity. Plus they look great because they match the kit. So there is a finished box and it goes with this card. So again, I would put a cookie in this one. That would be perfect. Chips Ahoy cookie, right? In this box, really whatever, maybe chocolates, those little nuggets or something would go great in there. And again, you'd stick your card inside so when they open it up, there's their fun stuff. This would be a fun one for a graduation, right? Congratulations for you. And then in this one here, I thought Lifesavers, of course, right? I don't know, a bunch, bunch of us are probably thinking Lifesavers would be great with this kit. You're a lifesaver. And this is the box that I altered. So it opens this way instead of lifting up. And inside I have all of these little fun Lifesaver candies. Okay. Yay! So how do I make that box? <laughs> I'm actually going to give you a link. Um, below that links you to another video that I did that shows you how to make that box because we're trying to make this video short and sweet. So if you're watching this on YouTube, look for the link below or it, it will be in my blog post that's coordinating with this particular kit. It is amazing how many extra little banner pieces you get and how many extra little hearts you get in this kit. You really get a lot of great extras and so I thought since my um, son is having surgery to repair his kneecap um, that it would be fun to make a bunch of these little tiny lifesaver kind of treats to hand out at the hospital. 
you're probably going to be watching this after his surgery scheduled for May 1st, and so I will have handed them out already, but I'm going to whip up a bunch of little individual, little you're a lifesaver type of um, treats to hand out to the, the nurses and doctors that help us out when we're there. Um, super simple to put together. Let me show you how to do this. You're going to take your trimmer, and you're going to place one of your envelopes in the trimmer, and you're going to use the measurements on this side, and you're going to go to the quarter, the half, and the three-quarter inch mark. So you can see there, and you're going to slice, give it a good cut, and you'll do that three times. So here's another three-quarter inch slice, and one more. Then what we'll want to do is cut them in half. Forgot about that. We've got to cut them in half. Now, this, this width here is slightly larger than three inches. It's three and an eighth inches. So you want to actually cut that in half. That would be one and a half plus a sixteenth. So here's the one and a half inch mark. And you'll want to go to the first tiny little mark right after that and slice it. So if you go with the first project idea that I shared, you'll actually have four extra envelopes to use from your kit. And four times six pieces, you would have then 24 of these little pieces. Here are four of them that I already did, and here are the other ones. Now, you'll notice the difference between the two different designs. This one has the fun little designer paper that's on the inside of the envelope, right? What you do for that is once you slice it, then you turn it inside out. Now, there's a couple that you can't turn inside out. This one you can, because it was sliced from um, more of the middle of the envelope, but this one here you cannot because it's one of the corners. So that one you would keep the solid color. But this way you have a lot of different, um, you know, designs, some variety for your fun little treats. Then you can bring in a couple different colors because the card base here, this is Calypso Coral, this is the Calypso Coral color, and this is just a lighter shade of it. So I stamped um, some tags with the Calypso color. And then this color here is our pool party color. So that way you can have coordinating little messages. Another tool that you'll need is a stapler. This is a Stampin' Up! brand one but that we used to carry a while ago, but we don't sell it anymore. But really, any stapler will work. So you look at your little individually packaged lifesavers, and if the wording, the lifesaver wording, is on the side without the seam, then um, you'll probably want to use it that way. <laughs> I think it looks nicer with the seam in the back. Um, so anyways, I do have a couple that are just plain. That looks good too. But um, yeah, so now you just kind of cinch the candy downward so that you have lots of cellophane there. And you tuck that in. This is one of the corner ones. There we go. You tuck it in and you position your stapler so that it's stapling backwards. That way you have the smooth side of your stapler on the back where it's not going to catch on fingers and clothing and you have the rough side cover, you know, that's going to get covered up. And then you just take some glue dots and you put a couple glue dots on the back here and you stick it on. And then again, just use that same trick if you're using a snail adhesive. You can just wipe the back of one of those hearts, pop it off, and place that to the left. So I did kind of write, uh, write justify my words when I stamped them on there. If you're a current Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you have by now received an email from Stampin' Up! that shares some alternate project ideas for this kit, and in that email you would have seen this card. I was asked by Stampin' Up! to create an alternate card idea for it, and this is the one I did. So I want to show you how I got this little heart cut out in there. So what I did is I first trimmed down this piece so that it was a card size, and the common card size is uh, five and a half by four and a quarter, so I trimmed this down to five and a half inches. I made sure that I did not uh, give this card a crease at the score line, and you can't see it from this side really, it's not showing, so that's a good thing. And then I took my one and a quarter inch circle punch, and I punched in 
uh, about there. I just kind of guessed. It, there was no measurement to it. And then I punched another heart a little bit higher so that I could see a little bit of overlap here and punched again. I'm sorry, I punched another circle. So then I had two circles that were right next to each other like this. Now if you don't have the one and a quarter inch punch, I also gave the tip that these circles that come in the kit are exactly one and a quarter inches. So you could instead flip this over, take your, your little circle tag and trace it, and then hand cut with the paper snips to get those two circle shapes out. The next thing that I did is I used my grid paper with the lines and I lined up this point and this point so that they were following one of these lines and I took a ruler and my pencil and I just followed this line of the grid paper all the way down like that and drew a line about an inch long. It doesn't have to be exactly, you know, it could be shorter or longer, but about an inch. And then I took the ruler and I connected the bottom of that line to the outside edge of the circle. And then I inserted a circle back in here so I could see the outside edge of this one and connected another line like this. Okay. Then I just took my paper snips and I trimmed that out and it formed the look of a heart. I raised it up onto dimensionals, did the same little trick where I put adhesive on the back side before pulling it off of the little sheet of hearts, stuck those down, I actually embossed the sentiments with, you know, so I use Versamark ink with gold embossing powder, pop that on with dimensionals, but you could use Calypso Coral ink, that's another coordinating ink so you don't have to have all the embossing tools, and then just tied a little ribbon on here before I stuck the whole thing down. And that is my finished card. I have one more idea to share. This last idea I got from someone in my group, Marcine Ingram, turned me on to a card called The Impossible Card, and she said she was inspired by um, the idea from Don Griffith. And I have since then seen several people showing this impossible card, and basically it's made up of three cuts, one, two, three, and a score line through the middle. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter piece of cardstock that's scored through the middle and cut two pieces on the top and one on the bottom below the score line. Now I do have another cut in this because I want to show you that you can really put these cuts wherever you want, but the idea is to have three, two on the top, one on the bottom, and then what you do is you take and you twist it. Okay, so let's say, ignore this one again, <laughs> let's say these are your cuts, here's your card, and it of course stands up so that you can see um, this fun little thing and then when you want to when you want to mail it you just fold this piece down and put it in the envelope you of course would put some connecting pieces on the front and back so that it stays a little more stable but if you were to cut here instead you can see that you can still make that impossible fold card and you can do it the vertical way too. So if you wanted to, you could put a score line this way and put your cut lines that way. So I'm going to show you two different examples. Here are the templates that I'm going to use for my two different examples. This is our new spruce color and here is the horizontal way and here is the vertical way. So again, a, um, a score line through the middle is at two and an eighth inches um, from here. That's two and an eighth inch in and then this cut I shifted over to the right a bit so this cut is at three and a quarter inches from this edge this cut uh, yeah this cut is one and an eighth inch from this edge and this cut is one and an eighth inch from that edge and then on the vertical one the score line comes to two and three quarter inches from either end and then from here it's another two and three quarter inches for this cut from this side a half inch cut from this side and a half inch cut from that side. So then what you end up getting is for your vertical card, just fold this up here and twist, your vertical card is going to look like this and your horizontal card is going to look like this. 
So to complete these cards, I'm using a few extra products that I haven't shared with you yet. The Wood Textures Designer Paper and Early Espresso Cardstock, which are available now and will carry over um, into the new catalog. And then in the new catalog, I'm using the Nature's Roots Framelit Dies because I wanted trees. And we don't have a tree punch or anything like that, so um, I wanted trees. So if you're going to have these dies, um, if you're going to use the dies, then you'll need the Big Shot die cutting tool. And then I'm also using a new color called Shaded Spruce. So let me share with you the measurements of the pieces that you're going to need for the horizontal impossible card. For the early espresso, you'll need a piece that's 2 by 5 and 3 eighths inches, and that one's going to get attached in the back. Then you'll need a piece of espresso that is 2 inches by 3 and an eighth. That will go there. And this one is 2 inches by 1 inch, and that will go there. And then um, you can see there's like a sixteenth of an inch border all the way around. And then we're going um, a little bit closer in. We're going to do a 1 and 3 quarter by 2 and 7 eighths inch piece here so that we have an eighth inch around. And then this piece is 1 and 3 quarter by 3 quarter inches right there. We'll use one of these banners in the kit to make a little connection piece there. And then we need decorations for this little panel. And of course we need the decoration on the front and then we need it to be blank on the back so that when we sign our card we have a place to sign it, right? So we're going to cut down one of the cards from the kit that has the little beams of light coming off of it. And this piece is 2 by 3 inches and the opposite side of the card you can get another 2 by 3 inch white piece. Those will go like this. You'll need some trees die cut, so just some scraps for your little trees. You'll need um, this tag from the kit, and this is going to become the sunshine. Isn't this fun? And then you'll need a little strip of green because we're actually going to have to cut those trees down just a tad, and then we'll add our um, little strip of grass down there, okay? Your strip of grass, by the way, is just cut from, um, so I had a, a little piece, like a, a skinny strip of cardstock, and I just tore so that it was about a half inch up from the straight edge. So that can just go across like that. Also keep in mind that when you put adhesive on the back of these pieces, you'll need to make sure that you're avoiding the area where <laughs> you're not going to have any cardstock, right? You don't want to have sticky stuff here, for example, right? So then one more thing to point out is the card pieces that I that I mentioned here, those actually go all the way down and then have a, an eighth inch border all the way around. So, okay, so now the stamping, we need this little piece here to be stamped. So we're mounting our stamp that says Adventure Awaits. I think this would be a fun card to give to somebody who's going to be traveling or maybe they're going to start a new job. Um, or they're graduating, you know it's that time of year, right? And we'll just stamp that down into the middle of our banner piece like that. And then we'll take two glue dots and we'll just adhere that piece across here. The trees, notice that when I stuck this here, I put the little circle, the, the punch out part where the tag gets attached, I put that kind of at an angle because I didn't want it to show through the middle of the trees, right? So, and then this will just go on like that. Oh, this is going to be so cute. I'm going to make the trees just slightly lower though so we can see more of the sunshine. And I decided to put this up on dimensionals. I thought it looked more prominent that way. And I put it closer to the actual scene of our card. So now we have a finished card. Um, and you can, of course, sign the back. I'm going to do the other one now. It's a slightly different version. Of course, it's vertical, but there's a different look to it, too. For our vertical card, we need to have some scraps for the trees, scraps for the grass. We need a banner. We need the card base that's cut down to 3 inches by 2 and 5 eighths for this piece. And, of course, you need um, the bottom of that card for the back. We'll need the little sunshine piece again, that circular tag. I put a heart in the middle of that. Isn't that cute? And then we're, for the early espresso, you're going to need a piece that's four inches wide by two and a half inches tall. This is going to go on the back side here, and you're actually going to see an eighth of an inch border of the spruce all the way around. This piece is two and a half by two and five eighths. And then we have a piece that is two and a half by three eighths inches. 
your wood grain paper, we're going to use this one here, you'll notice that there's a pattern that's continuous. So when we trim it, we're going to trim a portion out from this side and a portion out from that side. Let me attach these pieces first though. So I've attached the brown pieces and I actually readjusted where the heart is. I put it more central in the sun and that's because when I'm adding the trees that are now up on dimensionals, I think it looks a lot better with them kind of right between, or the heart right between them like this. So super cute that way, right? So this is more of like a lovey-dovey kind of card. <laughs> so instead of having uh, Adventure Awaits, which is a great one, I thought we'd put You Are My Adventure. Now the You Are My Adventure comes from two different stamps, Adventure Awaits and You Are My Anchor. So what I did, as you can see on this one here, is I masked off a portion of the stamp. So when you ink it up, you only get ink on that portion and then you take off the tape or a post-it note or whatever is masking it and you stamp it down. Do the same thing with this one here. Um, you are my anchor, so I'm going to uh, cover up the word anchor and then ink it up, peel off the tape and stamp it down. I would suggest putting the you are my first and then doing the adventure part, especially if you're going to emboss. So this piece is embossed ink. What I did is I stamped both images with Versamark ink and then I sprinkled on some gold embossing powder and heated um, the powder so that it turned a metallic gold. You could use just the Early Espresso ink, which is what I actually used on this card. I used Early Espresso, which matches that cardstock. You could do that. But since I've already pre-stamped this for another card um, that I never used it on, I'm going to go ahead and use it on this one. I also want to tell you that I accidentally gave you the wrong measurements for the wood grain or uh, wood textures paper. It is two and three eighths inches high because we want to have an eighth inch border all the way around. But I trimmed it a little bit short here, so it's supposed to be two and seven eighths. That's okay. I'll, it's not going to make a big deal uh, difference here. So now let's grab our ruler. And we're going to measure, if we want um, a sixteenth of an inch all the way around because it's really an eighth inch difference from here to here, we want an eighth of, or a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. And then we want to measure the way over there, from this spot a sixteenth of an inch in to the edge. And that would bring us to two and a half, slightly over two and a half, which is actually two and nine sixteenths. Oh, Rachel, we're getting into too much math here, you guys. Uh, so just think on your trimmer, two and a half plus an extra mark, okay? And we're cutting in from this side. This is why we're keeping this paper whole because we wanna have that same continuous look all the way through with this. Let's go ahead and attach that. And again, it's going to go right up to the edge here. Then for this piece here, we want to have, if this is 3 eighths of an inch here, we're going to go a sixteenth of an inch shorter than that. Okay? So find your 3 sixteenths, or I'm sorry, 3 eighths of an inch, which is just under the half inch, um, and go back one tiny, tiny little mark. And that would give you your 16th mark there. And ideally what I should have done was taken and put this on afterwards. Oh good, it's not completely bonded yet. So we're going to flip these two over. We're going to put them right next to each other and we're going to put adhesive on both of them at the same time because my snail adhesive is a little bit wider than this strip. And now this can be added with some glue dots. And remember to keep your glue dot on this side really close to that edge because it's not really touching too much over here, right? There we go. There are our finished cards. The impossible card is possible. <laughs> and I love how this pattern looks like it's very continuous on that piece of wood textures paper. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. 
Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other Paper Pumpkin kit ideas, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. If you're watching my video on YouTube, look for links in my description below. And to receive some extra exclusive Paper Pumpkin project ideas, get your subscription started with me as your demonstrator. I hope you all enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.